folks who couldn't be here tonight. Uh, again, I'd like to welcome you to, to chapter two. Very specifically here, um, we're going to be spending most of our time learning about uh, learning objective one. So remember LL learning objective one, uh, which is a more detailed look at the balance sheet. Balance sheets are actually considered classified balance sheets and you'll find that out tonight. Our next class, we're going to be looking at uh, introduction to some financial ratios and also uh, reporting financial reporting concepts and learning about GAAP. But tonight's all about the classified balance sheet. So why don't we get started? <clears throat> Okay, remember when you um, created your balance sheets from chapter one, the only thing that's on a balance sheet is a date, right? It's a single date. That's different than an income statement that shows a period of time, right? The income statement would be for the month or for the quarter or for the year. Uh, but your balance sheet is simply uh, a kind of a selfie of what's the assets of the company today What's the liabilities of the company today? What's the stockholders equity in the company today? It's just a date. So really, um, this is one of the big differences in a balance sheet than uh, the income statement or retained, earn in retained earning statement. This only looks at uh, the day, what are, at what point in time, um, are the, what are the assets, what are the liabilities, what is the owner's equity? And we already know the formula or the setup on a balance sheet. Assets will equal liabilities and stockholders equity. <clears throat> what you might not know is that they classify to help them understand what type uh, of this, we're gonna focus on assets right now, um, what type of asset they're dealing with in accounting they classify them into four pieces, okay? There's four different classifications uh, of assets. The first ones are on every single balance sheet uh, that you'll ever see. I'm having a little problem writing here. Um, so the first category are called current assets. And as I mentioned to you before opening up the PowerPoint, the word current, is synonymous with short term and that's synonymous with a year or less. Okay. So current assets are classified as assets that are going to be turned into cash within the year or used up within the year. Now you've already uh, seen some of those current asset accounts. Uh, like cash, like accounts receivable, um, like supplies, like prepaid insurance. You've seen those on balance sheets from chapter one. Well, cash is already cash. Accounts receivable is going to be turned into cash within 30 days because you're waiting to receive money on the work you've already done. And normally speaking, 30 days is usually the point where you want to get paid, you want to receive your cash. Um, supplies, once we use supplies, they are expensed. You'll see that connection to the income statement. Same thing with prepaid insurance. Once we use those, they're expensed. They're current assets because we use them quickly. All right? if I had a pizzeria, I would be buying a bunch of boxes and bags and so forth. Uh, to deliver, you know, put my pizza in and deliver my pizza to customers. Um, well, when I buy all that stuff, they're my asset. They're really supplies for me. But I'm going to use them up pretty quickly because as, be, as I'm selling pizza, I'll be, you know, using up those boxes, putting things in bags and wrappers and shipping them to, delivering them to my customers. Um, so supplies are current assets because we use them up very, very quickly. Right, less than a year. Um, that's different than all the other assets. All the other assets that are listed here technically are long-term assets, meaning that the, 
company is going to be using uh, them, owning them and using them for a period of longer than a year. Okay. Um, current assets are going to be on every single balance sheet you see. That's not true for the long-term assets that are classified as either long-term investments. Uh, they are not going to be on every balance sheet that you see. Uh, property, plant, and equipment will be on every balance sheet that you see. And not all companies have what we call intangible assets. So let's take a look at why you'll see property, plant, and equipment, that particular long-term asset on every balance sheet, but you might not see long-term investments on every balance sheet, and you might not see an intangible asset on every balance sheet. So property, plants, and equipment, the word property really is about land. The word plant is an old term for factories and buildings and things like that. So plant is really about buildings. And equipment is easy enough <laughs> to understand. Um, so if I had my pizzeria and I owned my, my building, I would be on a little piece of land. So I would own the land. That would be part of property, plant, and equipment. I would own the building. So the building is part of my property, plant, and equipment. And when you walk into my store, of course, even outside of the store, I would probably have big signs saying pizza, pizza, pizza. You'd walk in, you'd see tables and chairs, you'd see countertops, you'd see ovens and workstations and all different types of equipment that I'd be using to help me sell my uh, pizza. Those are all property plant equipment accounts. They're tangible assets, which means they all have a physical quality. You can touch the land, you can touch the buildings, you can touch the tables, you can touch the oven, and you might burn yourself, but you can touch it. So it's a tangible asset. You can touch it, feel it. It's got physical qualities to it. Um, and it's used in the business right now. I can't possibly sell any pizza if I didn't have my building if I didn't have my ovens, if I didn't have my refrigeration system, if I didn't have my workstations, I wouldn't be able to make any pizza to sell them. So it's absolutely necessary to know that property, plant, and equipment, these long-term assets are used in the business now to sell stuff. Whatever I'm selling, in my case, I'm selling pizza, in my example. Well, what if I wanted to, uh, and I'm doing quite well with my, my little pizza shop here, and I wanted to purchase uh, um, a building, say in Orange County or, or Westchester or something, and put another pizza store of mine there in the future. So I decided to buy a building and I own it, but I, I haven't turned it into my pizza shop yet. I just own the building. Well, that's a long-term investment. Now I own the building. So I'm assuming it's going to be for over a year. <laughs> you wouldn't buy a building and then next week, yeah, let's dump it. Um, but I'm not using it in the, in the business right now. I, I might own that building, but it's not a pizza shop. It's not helping me sell any pizza. It's just a building that I own for future development. I'm gonna be putting a pizza shop there in another year or so. Uh, so it would be considered a long-term investment, an asset that I own, but it's not directly related to selling my stuff. It's not directly related to selling goods or services. Um, some corporations, buy the stocks of their suppliers. So they'll, you know, their supplier might have, uh, might have stock. And so General Motors might do being business with the supplier, uh, thinks the company is grand and decides, hey, we got some extra money, let's buy some stock in this company. And, well, General Motors is in the business of selling automobiles, not investing in stocks. 
But the fact that they invested in stocks and own these stocks is an asset for the company. Uh, well, that asset isn't generating any sales of cars, so it's not property, plant, and equipment. Um, it's not related at all to what they do, but they own it, and you're assuming they're going to be owning those shares of stock for over a year. So it's going to be a long-term investment. So long-term investments are not on every balance sheet that you're going to see because a lot of businesses can't afford to be buying property and not using it. Um, but there are some companies that have those types of assets. And so these are, again, assets that the company owns for the long term, but they're not used for the primary business. They're not used to help sell the products and services that they sell. And I gave you those two examples. Intangible assets are another classification. It's becoming a lot more important over the years. Um, an intangible asset, again, the word intangible means it's not tangible. It doesn't have a physical quality. I was telling you property, plant, and equipment, you can feel, you can touch. Right? It has a physical quality to that. You can touch the building. You can touch all... Yeah. Well, intangible assets are indeed assets. They're very important things that are owned by the company, but they don't have a physical quality. So here's a couple of examples for you. <clears throat> if, uh, well, uh, Apple has invented many different types of devices, right? They started with an iPod, uh, iPhone, um, you know, they have uh, MacBooks and all types of things. Well, in order to say that they're the true owner of that invention, that's an invention, they had to get the government to recognize the ownership. And that's done through what we call a patent. Okay, P-A-T-E-N-T, -E a patent. And a patent is government recognition of ownership of ideas and inventions. Um, and so uh, the drug companies, as a matter of fact, that are making, whether it's a vaccine or they have drugs, that's an invention of that particular company. They will get a patent for the from the government to indicate that they're the owner of that invention. And thus, if anyone needs to use that invention, they need, obviously, permission. They need to pay the owner. You can't use it without the owner's permission. And usually that permission comes at a, at a price. Um, so that's very, those are important intangible assets, right? I mean, they're basically pieces of paper that indicate ownership. But it's a very important piece of paper, just like the uh, title uh, for your car, that uh, you prove ownership of your car because you have a title. Title proves that you're the owner of a car. I mean, the car has some value, but you wouldn't be able to sell it if you didn't prove ownership. Right. Title proves ownership. It's a piece of paper, but it's a, and a very important piece of paper because it has that value. Same thing with a house. Uh, you have a deed, which is a legal document indicating you're the owner of the house. So it might be a piece of paper, but it's related to something that's very, very valuable. Uh, copyrights are the same way. It's another intangible asset. Um, so when companies create uh, video games and pieces of software or musicians create music and songs, they will often get a copyright on that piece of software or on that music. And that copyright, again, proves the ownership. It's government recognition that you are the owner of said software of said music right and and that's very very important to sort of understand because the only way you make money uh if you create the software is to package it and sell it right if anybody can take your stuff and and use it then why bother inventing it i mean you know, it's um same thing with music it's very clear i mean 
just to give you a, a more recent example, and that's really not recent, it's pretty old. Um, I don't know how old, probably 10 years old at this point. But there is a song by Robin Thicke that featured um, T.I. And, and Pharrell. This might uh, sound a little familiar to you. It might not. But listen to the, you know, that woo! Yeah, yeah, here, yeah. woo! There we go, All right? Okay, so you probably have heard that. Do I get any thumbs up? You've heard that song before? Okay, so not that I wanted to entertain you with music, but just to prove a point. That music was actually copywritten in the 1970s by another group. So that, did, 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 hey, you know, woo, whatever, you know, they're saying, was actually copywritten by a group of musicians in the 70s. They did not get permission to use that music to create this song, Blurred Lines. It was a popular song. They made a lot of money on Blurred Lines. Okay. But unfortunately, it was blur. It was a very blurry line because they used other people's music. Well, the owners of the music had the copyright. They went to court. They were able to prove to the court that that was their music. They owned it. And they were not asked permission. And thus, they were, the money that was made from that song was taken away from them. It was a loss. And they asked the court to fix the loss. And the court did because of their intangible asset. Uh, my son makes, he writes a lot of lyrics. He's, I mean, he's 19, he'll actually be 20 this month. Good Lord, getting old. Um, he writes a lot of lyrics. He's, he's actually very good at writing things down. And he's often, when he was 16, he started to share this stuff. I'm like, oh, do you, how do you know you, you, you know, what if you give it to someone who uses it, who thinks it's so good that they use it and they, and they forget about you? Oh, yeah, that won't happen. I'll tell you yes. Yes, it will, son. You have to get everything copywritten. So for his 16th birthday, we sent a check for $55 the copyright office and he had a whole album of his songs copywritten and he's been doing that ever since because even though you know none it, it's it's certainly there's a chance that none of them will ever make it but in in that rare chance like blurred lines <laughs> someone picks up those lyrics and makes a song out of it um and does well you know, well, my son can seek justice. Yeah. Copyright, you know, I mean, look at all that software. My, Microsoft built an entire company on software. That's what they sell. They sell software. You know, they, they built the whole company. That, that, that intangible asset, that copyright on that software allows them to be a corporation. Same thing with Google. Google's a search engine. The same with Facebook. They live by copyright. Right. So it's a very, very important type of asset. But these are the four classifications of assets. All right. um, on the other side, liabilities are only broken into two pieces. Current liabilities, which are due within the year. So these are debts due within the year obligations, whatever the company owes. Within the year, they call it a current liability. If the debt is owed after a year, long-term liability. So this is relatively easy. We're gonna be focusing a lot on assets, spending a lot of time on assets. Uh, if you have your book, this is on page 47. Um, it's the Franklin Com Corporation balance sheet. Uh, and when we use the word current and long term, which means that year mark, well, the year is from the date on the balance sheet. That date on the balance sheet becomes critically important to you in determining what is long term and what is current. 
So in terms of assets, which are always listed first on a balance sheet, okay? Uh, again, you see the four classifications are listed here. Current assets are always listed first. Long-term investments, property, plant, and equipment, and intangible assets. Those are the four categories of assets on a classified balance sheet. Right. Current assets are assets that are going to be turned into cash within a year or used and expensed quickly within the year. Uh, so there's sort of a pecking order for current assets. Uh, the pecking order is liquidity first. So cash is cash. So it, it's already the most liquid asset you can have because you need cash to do everything. Pay bills, buy stuff, what have you. You need cash. Uh, but look how many other current assets are here that you're gonna need to learn. How exciting. You're gonna have a wonderful week learning this stuff. Mm -hmm. Please pay attention. Drugs are bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanna introduce you to a new account a debt investment, uh, a debt investment. Hmm. Sounds very interesting. Well, if it's debt, how can it be an asset? Well, because you gave, you, you, you are the lender. You are the lender. So let me simplify uh, the investment world for you uh, in very simplistic terms. Uh, if you wanna be an investor, you only have two choices. I'm sorry, I only have two choices. You can either lend your money or you can be an owner in something. Uh, the lending market is huge. You can loan your money in short term or you can loan your money long term. So investors that do short term lending are lending to the US government to uh, bank-to-bank uh, -bank loans to very, very large corporations in something called the money market. The money market is basically short-term lending. Could be overnight, could be for a weekend, could be a few weeks, few months, but no longer than a year. And if you are a lender in that, you own it. You have a debt investment. A debt investment is an asset because you lent your money in the money market. Uh, debt investments like money market funds can be cashed out at the end of every day. So after the trading day is over, which is at four o'clock, you can get your money out. It could be cash. So debt investments are listed after cash because cash is already cash and cash is available 24 seven. You can go to your bank and grab cash anytime. Well, you can't necessarily do that with a money market or a debt investment. You got to sell it. And that happens at the end of the day. You get your money right away, but still you wait to turn it to cash. So that's why it's listed second. And accounts receivable, if you remember, means that you've sold goods to another, to a, to a client. Usually in this case, if it's an accounts receivable, it's gonna be a business client. So one business sells stuff to another business. And you know this business pretty well, so instead of collecting the cash up front, which is what you would do if you and I walked into a store, they would collect the cash up front. Um, they give the business the stuff that they bought with an invoice, with a bill. Pay me later. So in other words, when you sell that to another business, you're waiting to receive payment on what you just sold. That's what an account's receivable is you're waiting to receive money on an account right? a customer you've already had sold stuff to now you're waiting to receive that money uh, receivables are going to be paid within there the expect the expectation is they're going to be paid within 30 days so if I sell you uh, if you're a business customer of mine and I sell you a whole bunch of stuff and I give you an invoice to pay I'm expecting uh, I'm gonna receive that money within the month. 
And since today's October 1st, I'm going to receive it by the 30, uh, 30th or 31st of the month. Uh, this month. I'm not waiting any longer than that. Well, sometimes you might be doing business with uh, businesses that can't pay you within 30 days. They actually need 60 days, 90 days, 120 days. Well, that's what a note receivable is. Remember the word note in accounting means loan. Receivable means you're waiting to receive. So obviously you made the loan. But almost all, as you'll know, and uh, you learn about in chapter eight um, in accounting 102, uh, almost all the notes receivable come from accounts receivable, businesses that need more than 30 days to pay their bill. So what do you do? I just sold a whole bunch of goods to a business today and I was expecting them to pay October 30th or October 31st. October 30th comes and they say, Mike, um, we really need 60 more days to pay this bill. You know, we can't pay it today. I say, sure, I'll give you, so that's a, uh, I'll give you an additional 60 days, but now we're turning this from an accounts receivable to a loan, to a notes receivable. And if it's a loan, I'm gonna give you a specific due date and I'm gonna give you an interest rate. I'm gonna charge you interest for that period of time. And that's basically what a note is. They sign it, you sign it, you got a loan, okay? Um, so that's basically how notes receivable are created. But notes receivable, like I said, unlike accounts receivable, which will be turned into cash within 30 days, a note receivable will be turned into cash, but you have to wait longer. It might be 60 days, 90 days, 120 days. But it eventually will be turned into cash. Do you kind of see the liquidity order so far, right? That investment, cash is already cash. That investments can be turned into cash within the day. Right, so within a day, you can get cash. Accounts receivable is going to be turned into cash within 30 days. That's the expectation. Notes receivable, you know, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, what have you, will be turned into cash, but during a longer period of time. Inventory is an interesting account because uh, what inventory is, <clears throat> is a very important asset to retailers. So when you go into a store, maybe you shopped at a Walmart uh, recently, and I'm not pushing Walmart on anybody. It's just one of the first stores that comes to mind. Um, Walmart, when you walk into a Walmart store, there's tons of things on the shelves all over the place. Big store. Well, they have to buy all that stuff and put it on the shelf first. So the fact that they have to buy it and put it on the shelf means that they own it. And that's what they call inventory, okay? Their inventory are the goods that they own that are for sale to customers. And so inventory will eventually be turned into cash, because right? they are eventually gonna be selling everything in the store. <laughs> it's just that things might take a while. I mean, they might sell very quickly their meats and breads and, and dairy, but, you know, those cans of soup, those diapers, those clothes on the rack uh, might take a long time to sell. Might be many days, might be many months, but obviously they want them selling within the year. You know what happens if a season goes by and they haven't sold something and they have this huge clearance rack. They definitely want to get it out the door within the year. They're not interested in keeping the inventory longer than a year. They'd rather have the cash. So they'll put it on a deep uh, discount. They'll put it on clearance because they just want the cash. They just want to turn their inventory to cash. So inventory will eventually be turned into cash. And it ends the liquidity order for current assets. Okay. And it begins also, inventory is a kind of an interesting uh, account because it it will be turned into cash, but then after businesses sell their inventory, they can expense it. So inventory supplies pre and prepaid insurance after they have been, after inventory has been sold to customers, after supplies and prepaid insurance has been used, 
which they're going to be using some of it month to month, you're going to see all of these on the income statement as expenses. Inventory, once it's sold, becomes cost of goods sold, which is an expense account on the income statement. Supplies, once it's used, right, and they check every month because that's the, that's the shortest period of time they do uh, an income statement. After, they, after the month, they'll see how many supplies they have used. What they have used becomes supplies expense. Prepaid insurance, again, you're buying an insurance policy up front for six months or for 12 months. You're not using it this, you're not using all 12 months of insurance on the day you buy it. So they're, you know, it's your asset when you buy it. Insurance covers month to month. So you could only use a month of insurance at a time. And if you sell the policy back to the company, you get your money back. So this is why it's looked at as an asset. Okay. Um, but after that month is done and you've used up that month of your insurance coverage, that becomes insurance expense. Okay. So current assets, definitely the most complex part of a classified balance sheet because there are so many accounts. All of these are accounts that you need to know, right? I think I gave you my, my, my uh, big secret when it comes to learning accounting, right? The root word of accounting is account. So if you wanna learn about accounting, you've gotta know about the accounts because all we talk about are the accounts. All we talk about are the accounts. That's why it's super important to spend time learning those accounts. These are the individual balances in all of these accounts that we just went <clears throat> through. And we always, on a classified balance sheet, we always have a total current assets. And we put that in the very far right column of the balance sheet. These are where the totals go. So here are the total current assets are listed at $22,100. That's the total of all of these accounts together, okay? <clears throat> so you'll have uh, some interesting work on current assets to do, but you wanna keep the Franklin Company Corporation balance sheet handy because it actually has a very good uh, list of, of accounts and how to order them. When it comes to a classified balance sheet, order is important. That's the way you order um, current assets on the classified balance sheet. So you want to keep this handy because it has a lot of accounts and they give you the proper order of those accounts. Mm -hmm. Now, this particular company has long-term investments. So they have two long-term investments. So these are assets that the company owns for the long term. They plan on keeping them more than a year. However, they are not being used to sell the company's products or services, okay? And so stock investments simply mean that the company owns stock in other companies. That's nice, that's nice. Uh, but owning a stock in another company isn't gonna help you sell your products to, to your customers. But it is an asset, you do own it. And usually if you have a stock investment, you do, want to look, uh, you do want to wait longer than a year to see how it performs. Uh, and here you actually own some real estate. There's an investment in real estate. The difference is even though it's real estate, it's not helping you sell your goods and services. You're not using it as a currently as an office or, or a store. You just own the real estate. Um, so that's why it's a long-term investment. So long-term investments here, um, assets that the company owns uh, and plan to all keep for well over a year, but they are not being used in the operations of the company. They're not being used to sell products or services for the company. Okay, That's what makes it a long-term investment. If the real estate they owned was being used to sell their goods, it would be property, plant, and equipment. It would be property plant equipment. This is a, another very, very important uh, classification of asset uh, because every company will have it. 
every company has current assets. I can, I can guarantee you that. And every company has property plan equipment. I can guarantee you those two classifications are on every single balance sheet you're ever going to see. Okay. Uh, you're not going to see long-term investments on every balance sheet. Some, yes. Some, no. Okay. So the word property, as I mentioned, is really synonymous with land in this case. Um, property is listed first. So land is actually going to be listed first under property plan equipment. Um, the, uh, the, the $10,000 of land that you see here is what we actually paid for it. Assets on the balance sheet are listed for what the company paid for them, not what they're worth today, right? Not what they're worth on the date of the balance sheet, but simply what the company bought the land for at the time they bought the land. That's what's listed on the balance sheet for property plan equipment accounts, okay. Um, if the company had a building, the building would be listed next, but they don't have a, a apparently they don't have a building uh, here, which is interesting if you want to analyze it a bit. They have land and they have equipment, but no building, maybe they're renting. Um, <clears throat> Equipment is also part of property, plant, and equipment. It's a long-term asset that's being used in the business to help sell goods and services for the company. What they have here, this $24,000, is simply the amount of money they spent to purchase the equipment. Um, that equipment, however, is only going to be used for so long. So if I have a delivery truck, well, I'll even take one. I, I, UPS was here earlier. Um, they have a lot of trucks. How long, are they, and they drive them all day long. <laughs> right. how, how many years, is that truck's going to last forever? No, I mean, it's going to last a period of years before it needs to be replaced, right? All, all machines like trucks and cars break down. So, <clears throat> so they're gonna be using that truck for a period of years after which it needs to be replaced. So they know that that truck is only good for that company for a certain period of years. And so what, what accounting allows them to do is say, look, you know the portion of value you used in that truck to deliver that stuff? Um, I know you're gonna use this truck for five years, but every month you use this truck, you can expense the portion of value that you've used on this equipment as a depreciation expense. So after we use equipment month to month to month for a very long period of time, we will see a trail of depreciation, which is the uh, amount of value of that asset we have used to generate revenue in the business. Obviously, if UPS didn't have delivery trucks, they wouldn't be able to deliver. Well, they charge for deliveries. They need the trucks to deliver. It's clearly the truck is related to the revenue of the company. So thus the truck can be expensed over time as depreciation expense. Yeah. So uh, that's how they, I would do it if I had a pizzeria and I had a delivery truck or, or a car that delivered pizza. Um, I, I, I certainly would be delivering as many pizzas as possible, but I know that my car or truck can only last so many years. Well, the more I use that car and truck over, over time, the more I've, I've depreciated it, the more I've used its value to help me generate sales of pizza. So every time you see equipment, same with buildings, you will have depreciation expense on those types of assets. Um, in this case, the $5,000 that's listed as accumulated depreciation literally is how much of this $24,000 equipment they have already expensed to depreciation. Accumulated means sort of a total amount of depreciation. So they might've had this equipment for a couple of years because they've already expensed $5,000 uh, worth of if it's value. They've already written off. They've already had a depreciation expense for that period of time. Um, the $19,000 is what we call a book value, right? Book value. 
a book value of an asset is simply the original cost of that asset minus its accumulated depreciation. That's the book value. Okay. Um, so the land is $10,000. Land doesn't depreciate because land is always usable. We've been on the same, we've been on the same pr uh, planet for, for some time. You know, we, we really depend on being on land, being around for a long time. We're assuming the land is going to be here for a long time and always be usable. Uh, it might be a building, an office building today, you can tear the building down on the land is still good, put up a restaurant. The land is still good if you tear that restaurant down and put up a parking lot. Doesn't really matter. The land is always useful. So the land does not depreciate. But you cannot say that for the buildings. You cannot say that for the equipment, for the vehicles. You can only use them for a certain period of time before you've got to replace them. Um, that's the way they are. So that's the difference. That's why land is sort of just already listed here because we don't depreciate land. But equipment has a useful life. Um, and we know how much of that equipment we've used by looking at the accumulated depreciation um, and the book value. So <clears throat> the $7,200 here, by the way, is the total for long-term investments. The $29,000 here is the total for property, plant, and equipment. The last category is an intangible asset. And uh, in this case, this particular company does have one. They have a patent. So they've actually, they in invented something because they own something. Um, and so uh, they have $3,100 uh, patent. Uh, that's usually the cost of uh, applying for and obtaining the patent. That usually is how they do the value of patents. Um, and so this is your last category. Notice that in the totals column, all the categories are current assets, long-term investments, property equipment, and equipment, and intangible assets. Total assets are double underlined here. Okay. I think this is a very important uh, balance sheet to have, and it's right in your book. And I think you need to use this to help you structure the asset portion of a classified balance sheet because assets are the most complex because there's four different ways to classify them. So that's where it's gonna take you a little bit of time to make sure you understand how to classify those accounts, okay? On the other side of this, it's easy because it's the same balance sheet, but the only thing that's broken into pieces is liabilities. Uh, liabilities are only broken into current and long-term. Again, current. In this case, it's a liability. So this is, a, this is something that the company owes, a debt or an obligation that they have within a year, a year from the date on the balance sheet. So they owe this money between today, October 31st, 2017, which is the date on the balance sheet, and October 31st, 2018. Any debt or obligation that they need to pay within that period of time is a current liability. If it's not due until after a year from then, which would be after October 31st, 2018, then that liability would be a long-term liability. Okay. Um, and here we've already gone through uh, some liabilities. We'll just go through them again, make sure you understand the accounts. Uh, very important to know the accounts, right? We're in accounting. Um, there is an interesting pecking order to the liabilities up front. Notes payable will always be listed before accounts payable. Okay. Um, and, and that's, that's something that you'll see on every balance sheet. Notes payable will be listed first before accounts payable. Uh, that's the way, that's, you'll see that all the way through this book for sure. Um, so I'm giving you fair warning. Remember what a note is, a note is a loan. <clears throat> but this, in this case, is a note payable. So it means you owe the loan. It's a current liability. So uh, most notes payable are short term, uh, meaning due within the year. And a note payable, how, how the loan works, as you might know, um, is the company, in this case, Franklin Corporation, was given a loan on a certain day. Um, they got the cash on a certain day. Let's say it's for 90 days. It's a 90 day loan, a uh, 90 day note. Well, they don't have to, they will, they don't have to do anything until the due date, which is called a maturity date. 
on the maturity date, they pay the entire loan back plus interest. Okay. So they don't have to make monthly payments. I know when you and I get loans, well, what's the monthly payment? Um, that's not how it works with a note payable. With a note, they, you get the, they get the loan right up front and they have a due date. On that due date, they're gonna pay everything back, the loan and interest the same day, okay? Uh, but again, a lot of times current liabilities uh, for notes payable are short, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days. Usually multiples of 30 days is usually how a lot of notes go. Mm -hmm. An accounts payable is any, any bill due within 30 days. So you got a, um, you check the mail today and you got a bill from the Central Hudson. You have electric bill due. Okay, that's an accounts payable. Before today, you didn't know you had a bill, but you did use the electric for your, for your company. And so you got to pay it. That's an accounts payable. So usually almost any bill that's due within 30 days can be thrown into uh, accounts payable in general. Uh, we talked about this uh, account uh, in chapter one. I can't express how important it is. In this case, this is unearned sales revenue. So uh, not unearned service revenue. So on the, on the Sierra Corporation balance sheet, you saw unearned service revenue. So uh, that means that Sierra Corporation got cash up front from a client and they owe the client some tours, right? Because that's what they did, hiking tours. Uh, we don't know exactly what Franklin Corporation does, but because it has inventory, it probably sells goods. And when you sell goods, the revenue account is called sales revenue. When you sell services, it's probably gonna be service revenue. But if you sell goods, it's, it's sales revenue. So here you have unearned sales revenue, which means that people have paid up front and they're waiting for you to give them the products that they paid for. Right. Now, a lot of companies have unearned, service rev uh, unearned sales revenue. For example, usually uh, for, some, um, for some phone companies, like if, when a new iPhone comes out, oftentimes people prepay. Oh, I've already paid for it and I'm waiting for it to be delivered. Um, or if some piece of software or game comes out, sometimes there's people that prepay. Uh, once you prepay for something, that company has to say it's unearned sales revenue because they still owe you whatever you bought, the phone, the game, you know, whatever, right? whatever you just said. So that's, uh, that's really important to understand. So here they have unearned sales revenue representing that. It's a current liability because customer, you want to deliver that stuff to the customer quickly, right? You're not going to wait to ask a customer to wait a year. Although uh, for a while there, that's what Tesla was doing for electric cars. Uh, delivery for electric cars for Tesla, I think just a couple of years ago, you had to wait over a year to get a car. Um, I'm not that patient myself, but, um, but that's, that's unusual. Usually customers will not wait a year uh, to get something. <laughs> Salaries and wages payable is another common account, uh, liability account um, that you'll see as a current liability all the time. And that's because there's payroll all the time. <clears throat> I don't know how you get paid. Might be weekly, might be every other week, what have you. But when you get paid, are you getting paid for the work you just did? And the answer in most 99% uh, of the cases is no. This is work I did the previous week that the business owed me. Well, that's why it's a liability because they owed you this. You've already done the work. <clears throat> You've put your time cards in and they owe you that money in the next payroll, whatever the payday is. So it's a salaries and wages payable once you've submitted your time cards and the company knows they owe you this in the next payroll. So you'll see that account on every balance sheet. Uh, interest payable is related to the notes payable. Like I said, with the notes payable, you, <clears throat> you get, a company will get a loan today and, they, and they'll pay it back on the maturity date, which is the due date, the payment date of the loan. Say it's, six, say it's 90 days away. Um, well, if it's 90 days away, they are going to pay 90 days of interest all on one day. 
But if you remember from chapter one, the income statement showed something called an interest expense. Right? And that's because any interest on a loan that a company has is considered a business expense. Not the loan itself, just the interest on the loan is considered a cost of doing business, it's considered an expense. Uh, but as you know, they are going to be writing those income statements every month. Even though this particular note might not be due for 90 days, that's a three month period. They're going to be doing at least three income statements. So they're going to want to expense the portion of interest for that month, even though they're not paying it until it's due. So they've already taken an interest expense for the month that they had the loan. Uh, and they need to say they're going to pay this later. And that's basically what interest payable is. They've already taken the expense and they're showing they're going to pay this interest later when it's due. So that's interest payable. Notice how total current liabilities are listed and on the far right column. You need to understand in the classified balance sheet, we have total current assets on the asset side, total current liabilities on the liability side. Critically important to know that difference. That's, that's very, very important too. The only other classification of, <clears throat> excuse me, liabilities are long-term liabilities. And again, long-term means these are due over a year from the date on the, on the balance sheet. That's the due order. It's very interesting because I'm gonna skip this first one real quick. I'll go back to it. There's a notes payable here. Woo. Notes payable here, notes payable there. Did they make a boo-boo? No, there's no boo-boos here. It's just that this portion of the note payable, this $1,300, isn't due until after a year from this date. That's when they have to pay it back. So that's why it's a long-term liability. Whereas these notes payable, this $11,000 is due within this year, a year from the date on the balance sheet. So if it's due within the year, it's a current liability. This portion is not due until next year. So it's a next year, meaning the year after the balance sheet here. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's, it's due after 12 months from the date of the balance sheet. So thus, to long-term liability. The word mortgage <clears throat> um, is basically a loan on a property or a building. Okay. And so this particular company, Franklin, does have land. Um, they do have property, and so they must have borrowed money to purchase that property. And that's what a mortgage is. Now, mortgages tend to be very long-term loans. I mean, if you and I went for a, uh, for a loan to purchase a house, a typical loan is 30 years. Mortgages are typically done for 30 years, although shorter terms are available and becoming more popular. Um, so for businesses, mortgages are, are long-term loans. It might be 10-year loans, 20-year loans, I mean, but they're long-term loans. So a mortgage, again, is a loan on property or building. Um, Total liabilities are listed here. That's the, law, that's the current liabilities and the long-term liabilities added together. Thankfully, stockholders' equity looks the same because it is the same. Right. Common stock is always listed first because the, they have to be owners of the company for the company to exist, right? So the very first way a corporation is born is it has investors, it has owners. So common stock represents common ownership. Owners have to come first. That's why it's listed first. A company has to exist for a while to determine whether it made a profit. Retained earnings is the amount of that profit that's kept in the company. So retained earnings is always listed second because it takes a company a while to generate a profit. Thus, it to take, takes a while to generate retained earnings. So common stock happened first, right away, listed first. Retained earnings is about the amount of the profit that's retained in the company. 
comes after the company's been existing for a while, comes second. Please pay attention. So uh, here's this, I mean, this is from your book. It just shows again, um, the word current here is synonymous with within a one year period of time. That's the easiest way and the best way to, um, uh, to recognize them. And then the accounts we've kind of gone over already. Uh, here is a sample of Southwest Airlines balance sheet. Their current assets are listed here. Um, as you see, they have cash and other short-term investments, receivables, inventory, and prepaid expenses like prepaid insurance, for example. So uh, they also follow that particular uh, pecking order of um, liquidity and then expenses. <clears throat> okay, so cash and other resources that are reasonably expected to be realized in cash or sold or used within a year are called current assets. So you, that's basically a current asset. Uh, Long-term investments, again, they are uh, owned by the company, but they are not, not currently used in its operating activities, in the opening and closing of, this, uh, of, of the business, of selling stuff to customers, operating activities. So they own them, yes, they own them. We're assuming they're, they're gonna be held for longer than a year, thus the word long-term will fit, but they're not being used to generate anything. So here's a little clip from Google's balance sheet they have, um, Equity is the same as same word as stock. So they have some stock investments uh, here as well. Again, Google doesn't, doesn't make a living by buying and selling stocks, okay? Um, they make a living with a bunch of other things. So this is why it's a long-term investment. Uh, property plan equipment, we often call it PPE for short. Um, but these are long-term assets. They have long lives in the comp uh, in use. They're currently used in the in the company uh, operations to generate uh, revenue. Um, so they include things like land and buildings and equipment, delivery truck, furniture and fixtures are all property, plant and equipment accounts. Um, like I said, these are only going to be useful for so long. You can only use a delivery vehicle for so long before you need to replace it. And so probably plant and equipment is um, subject to depreciation, which is a, a way of expensing the portion of the asset that you've used to help you generate your sales revenue or your service revenue. Uh, depreciation is an expense every month on the income statement. And all those expenses are added or, or accumulated, added together in the accumulated depreciation account. Okay. We often call property plant and equipment fixed assets. Fixed assets. Here's Tesla. I mentioned them earlier, they've come back. Um, the order I have an issue with, because land would usually be listed first, but I think. Um, uh, Part, part of it had to do with how this was put in here. Uh, but here they have machinery and tooling. Uh, they have land and buildings, computer equipment, et cetera. Um, all probably plant equipment accounts. We're not gonna get into leaseholds or other stuff until uh, uh, later in the, in the next course. So intangible assets, intangible, do not have a physical substance. Uh, we talked about Patents being government recognition that you own an invention. Uh, copyrights, that same recognition that you own um, the words to a song or the music, you own a piece of software, you're the developer, um, you know, you own a piece of artwork, you're the, you're the creator of a book or author of a book or creator of a piece of art. Uh, there are other types of intangible asset accounts um, that are listed here, goodwill, trademarks, trade names. We'll certainly get into those uh, in chapter, oh, chapter, what chapter, nine, um, that looks in more detail at the fixed assets. 
Disney. Disney makes a living on intangible assets. Those characters, um, their theme parks are based on all those stories. Uh, they have copyrights on all of them. They own them. You cannot be, you know, Mickey Mouse or Buzz Lightyear or anything without permission from Disney. And often that, that requires a fee. So even I know Halloween is coming up potentially um, this year. It's going to be probably a little bit different than in prior years. Uh, so when, when kids put on, you know, go to the store and buy those, those outfits, well, before those outfits could, or, or costumes could be made, because Disney owns a lot of, you know, they own Star Wars, they own Marvel, uh, you know, plus all the regular characters. Uh, if little kids want to dress up as that, then the costume company who made the costume has to get permission from Disney to do it because Disney owns the characters. And that often comes in the form of a fee. Even so, you got toy companies that want to make Disney characters for, for action figures and toys. They're going to have to pay Disney a fee for permission to do it because Disney owns the character. Um, so it's, it's, it's complicated, but it is very, very important because the entire company here is built on mostly character um, copyrights. They have franchises, they have licenses, there's trademarks that they all own, and of course, goodwill, because Disney paid a whole bunch of money for Marvel. Uh, and they paid a whole bunch of money for the Star Wars collection, Lucasfilms. Um, so that, ha that happened within the last 10 years. Uh, Disney went on a buying spree, uh, buying a ton of characters. They overpaid for those characters. So let's say Marvel uh, comics of all those characters might have been worth $5 billion. Disney paid 10. Um, well, that all that extra money that they paid for those um, characters is goodwill. Okay, uh, and that's how it would be listed on, on the balance sheet as an intangible asset. And Disney did overpay for Marvel and they overpaid for Star Wars. Uh, but, uh, and it's reflected here in this massive amount of goodwill that they have on their balance sheet. This is in millions. So that's $27 billion, folks. Okay, $27 billion. Um, it's a lot of goodwill. They overpaid for a lot of stuff when they expand. And, and they do. That's what, that's what they did. They did the same thing when they bought ABC and ESPN. Disney owns a lot of stuff. And they pay top dollar for it. Um, every, all the, um, when you buy something, you're buying everything on their balance sheet, basically. So if you're overpaying for that, like I said, if, if Marvel only had, was worth $5 billion, and you ended up paying $10 billion. That, that additional $5 billion you paid for the company is goodwill. Okay. All right. So um, that's part uh, A of Learning Objective 1. Um, focuses on the assets section of a balance sheet. Uh, in your book, there is this do it exercise that we'll review real quick. Uh, a company, Baxter Hoffman, has all these accounts. Right? There are six accounts that are listed, not in the proper order. And they say, look, these are, um, we want you to prepare the assets section of the, bal of the classified balance sheet for Hoffman. So you know it's a classified balance sheet. Classified balance sheets start with current assets. Right? So you see that there are six different accounts. Can you identify the current assets within, the, within these? Well, prepaid insurance is a current asset. Cash is a current asset. Equipment is not. Equipment is probably plant equipment. Accounts receivable is a current asset. Inventory is a current asset. Accumulated depreciation on equipment is not. It's part of PPE. So this uh, account and this account will be going together as PPE accounts. All the other accounts are gonna go as current asset accounts on the balance sheet, but wait, 
current assets have a pecking order, right? It's liquidity order and then the expenses. So what you have here is cash is always going to go first. It's always your most liquid asset. Accounts receivable is going to be turned into cash within 30 days. It's listed next. Inventory will eventually turn into cash. <laughs> we don't know how long things sit on a shelf before they're sold, but they'll eventually be turned into cash. You will eventually sell it and collect cash for that. Uh, but it also, once it is sold, it turns to cash, but it also becomes expensed. Cost of goods sold. Um, so inventory will be expensed and prepaid insurance starts as an asset, but after we use it, becomes expensed. Notice we have total current assets listed in the far right column, $7,600. And then we have two property plant and equipment accounts. If you looked at the Franklin Corporation um, balance sheet, you saw that the equipment came first and we take away that accumulated depreciation. So this is the cost of the equipment. This is how much of that equipment we have expensed through depreciation already. This is the book value of the equipment. And this is the total assets. So this is one of the things you're gonna to have to be doing as part of your work in this section. But I never, ever, ever want you to do things without examples in front of you. You should always be having examples uh, or samples of these balance sheets and income statements in front of you as you're doing them. There's no need to go blind in here. You know, I don't want you to do it by memory. It's crazy, it's a crazy idea. Um, and it's not necessary. This is an open book, open resource course for a reason. I want you to use the resources to help you get things done. So you should always have those uh, samples in front of you so you can, uh, you can use them. Um, your book has some notes here on classify, I'm sorry, on uh, current liabilities, which we've already went over. Again, if you need to pay them within the year, the year of the date of the balance sheet, it's a current liability. What uh, is interesting is, you remember we talked about the long-term debt, right? The long-term debt, like a mortgage payable might be for 30 years, but the portion you owe this year is a current liability. Why? Because you owe it this year. So remember, any debt or obligation you owe within the year is a current liability. So the portion that you owe on a long-term debt this year, the portion that's due this year is also a current liability. That makes it interesting. Uh, another snippet from Google's balance sheet showing its current liabilities Long-term liabilities, right? The company expects to pay these after the year, right? After one year from the date on the balance sheet. Uh, this is a snippet from Nike, okay? Um, and they have notes payable here as well for long-term, but they also have uh, another account called bonds payable. Uh, a bond is a loan from investors. A lot of people pay attention to the news. They hear all about the stock market. Yeah, the stock market is, is uh, important in, in a way. Uh, but uh, the bond market is really not mentioned much. But the bond market is just as important as the stock market. If you're an investor, you really have two choices. You can lend your money or you can own something. I mean, those are only two choices that are open to investors. Uh, I was talking to you about lending your money in the short term in the money market as a debt investment for you. Well, if you, you can also lend your money long term to companies and governments through the bond market. Okay. Um, that's true. But this is a bonds payable, which means that Nike borrowed money from investors. And they owe the, and they got to pay them back over the long term. Okay. Um, so that's, that's another. So when you see the word bond, just think loan from investors. And of course, we've gone over stockholders' equity already. All right, so let's play a game, shall we? We just learned, and I know it's all new and exciting for you, uh, but we just learned all about the balance sheet classifications, right? There are four classifications of assets. 
current assets, long-term investments, property, plant, and equipment, and intangible assets. These are the four types of uh, classified assets. We learned that there were two ways to classify liabilities, current or long-term, and stockholders equity is not broken into any classifications. Um, so we're gonna be looking at a list of, of accounts, and I'm gonna be calling on you randomly uh, to see if you can classify it. And of course, you know, this is just, mem it's kind of like a memory game, I suppose, but it'll help you understand your homework as well. Um, when we, when we mention an account, you're gonna, I'm gonna ask you to classify it. It's either gonna be a current asset, long-term investment, private plant and equipment, intangible asset, current liability, long-term liability, or a stockholders equity account. If it does not belong on the balance sheet, because some accounts don't belong on the balance sheet, right? Your revenue accounts belong on the income statement, not the balance sheet. Your expense accounts belong on the income statement, not the balance sheet. So if you see any of those accounts, you can say, nah, well, maybe not as, dramatic as I just did, but you can say nah, you know, nope, not on the balance sheet. No, mm -hmm. please pay attention, mm -hmm. drugs are bad, all right. So uh, let's start with, who's here with us? Nicole, how you doing, Nicole? Are you here with me? Nicole, how you doing? <laughs> All right, good. Um, if you don't mind going first, I have this salaries and wages payable account. Uh, we've actually seen this in our tour today. Do you remember where? All right, I think you said current liability. I can I can not hear you too well, but if you said current liability, you're right, right? So it's a payable account. The word payable is associated with uh, the fact that you owe something, so it's a liability. And salaries and wages, you're going to be paying the next payday. So you're going to be paying within a week or two. So it's definitely a current liability. Okay, thank you, Nicole. Hannah, hate to pick on you, although I like your hat. I like your hat a lot. It's very good. Thank you. Um, the next account listed here is service revenue. It's not on the balance sheet. It's right. not an income statement. Exactly. So service revenue, that's a good pick, right? Service revenue is going to be one of those nah accounts because it's not on the balance sheet, right? Revenue, service revenue is on the income statement. It doesn't belong here. And so congratulations. Good Thank job. <laughs> uh, Deidre, how you doing? You're in a comfortable chair, I hope. It looks comfy. Uh, you have interest payable coming at you. How would you classify that? Yeah. Well, we got some audio problems here too. Can't hear you. Um, it might be beneficial to type it into the chat. Yeah. Um, well, I think, I, I, I can't read lips too well, but I think you said current liability, uh, you know, in which case that would be correct, okay? It's a current liability because interest uh, payable, right, is something on a, on a note and you've expensed it already because you're gonna paying it, you're paying it very soon. So interest payable would be a current liability. And I thank you for playing. All right, Hope, how you feeling? You got goodwill. Give it a shot. Um, I'm thinking long-term liability. Okay. And um, I don't know why, what made you think long-term liability. It is long-term, but it's, um, not, it's not a liability. Okay, well, it's something due. Mm -mm. So um, I'll, I'll refresh everyone's memory because I mentioned it. So remember when we were talking about Disney or when I was talking about Disney, uh, they bought Marvel, they bought uh, Star Wars for ridiculously more than what they were worth on paper. That additional stuff is called Goodwill. 
and that makes goodwill an intangible asset. Okay, so it's an intangible asset account, and you will learn that as you read. But a good, good try, good try. Uh, Johnny, tell her what she's won. Absolutely nothing. Okay, so uh, we will go ahead and, and to the next contestant. All right, uh, Julia, how are you feeling today, Julia? I'm good. How are you? You're good. Oh, yeah. I think we're all feeling lucky today. I think um, so. <laughs> so we have, I have depreciation expense for you. The PPE. Okay. All right. Well, I, I can tell you that you're on the right track because depreciation has a lot to do with equipment, right? Um, and so I can understand why you thought PPE. Uh, the, the real critical word here is the word expense. So uh, when you see the word expense attached to an account, I can tell you that you're 99%, you'd be 99%, 99.9% right if you thought it was an expense account. <laughs> okay, so, um, so actually depreciation expense is an expense account and thus is not part of the balance sheet. What's on the balance sheet is accumulated depreciation, which you'll see in a moment. Okay, but thank you very much for playing. Okay, do we have a prize for her, Johnny? No. Okay, so we're gonna move right on. Sorry, Devin, how are you? Good, how are you? Oh yeah, just living the dream, you know, living the COVID life. All right, um, so what we got here is mortgage payable and it's gonna be due in three years time. Uh, that's uh, a long-term liability. A long-term liability, and I would agree with you because a mortgage is is a, is a liability, and because we're not paying it for another three years, it's a long-term liability. So, nice work there. Okay, any uh, any prizes? No, no, no prizes. Sorry about that. But anyway, um, let's see, Michael, how you doing, Michael? Pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Which Michael is this? Mike Mentz, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, this is an investment in real estate. We're at the top of the next column. How, how would you classify that? A long-term asset. Uh, it's definitely a long-term asset, but uh, uh, what specific classification would it be? So the long-term uh, assets are either long-term yeah, investments, property uh, plan equipment, or yeah, intangible. Property, it would be a fall into property. Okay, uh, in this case, it's just an investment in real estate. They're not using it. Okay. And so if they're not using it in the current operation of the company, it would be considered a long-term investment. Okay. okay. So if I just own the building, but I'm not using it right now to sell any of my pizza, well, I'm big on pizza today, um, you know, then it's, it's, it is something I own for the long-term, but I'm not using it to sell any pizza. So it's not property plan equipment. Property plant equipment is used right now in helping me generate whatever I'm selling. Okay. Uh, so my pizza oven would be property plant equipment. But buying or having a, buying a piece of land or buying a building in which I haven't turned it into a restaurant yet is simply a long-term investment. So, uh, so I know you'll pick up on, on that. Um, let's see who's next in line. Let's go to the other Michael. How are you doing, Michael? Good. Excellent. So Michael, uh, you got equipment here. So how would you classify that based on the information we got today? I would put that on the uh, PPE. Yes, you'd be absolutely correct. So this is property plant and equipment. It might help to understand that the word equipment is also used in the classification. So that's a nice way to connect the dots. Um, and so property plant equipment is part of PPE. We're assuming in this case that the equipment account is all the equipment that we're using right now to generate um, our products or services. So that's a nice job. All right, let's go to Arlene. How you doing, Arlene? Good, how are you? Oh yeah, just living the life. Accumulated depreciation on that equipment. How would you, uh, how would you categorize that based on our discussion tonight? A PPE. Yes, it'll go right underneath the equipment account. And that means it's going to be in the same section, the same classification. It's going to be PPE. Nice work. 
Thank you very much. Uh, let's see who else is here. Um, Alyssa, or Alicia, sorry. How you doing, Alicia, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. All right, good to hear your voice. How are you feeling tonight? I'm good, how are you? Oh yeah, just, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Um, we have this other account here called <laughs> Short-Term Debt Investments. Now, I know we've seen this uh, during our talk tonight, but it was a long talk, and, and I know everyone was a little tired. But can you remember how you would classify that? Well, doesn't it say it in its name? It would be short-term asset? It would be short-term, and it's an asset, right? So when you actually own a debt investment, it's an asset. So short-term, we call current. Right, so current asset. Debt investments are uh, uh, basically, right, uh, loans that you've made for the short term. How short? Could be overnight, could be in a money market. And so uh, those are, are short term debt investments. They can be turned into cash pretty quickly. Nice job. Thank you very much. Uh, Emily, how are you feeling tonight? I'm good. How are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. Guess what you got? You got retained earnings. How would you classify retained earnings? What type of an account is that on the balance sheet? They're on the stockholder's equity. Correct, right? So retained earnings would be, you'd see that under the stockholder's equity section of the balance sheet, right? With common stock, for sure. All right, Emily, nice job. Thank you so much. Uh, Lindsay, how you doing, Lindsay? Oh, we got a chat here. Good. Okay, good. All right. So we can, you can do your chat. That's good. Uh, Mike's not working tonight. Okay. That's, that's fine. That's fine. So you can type away. Um, unearned service revenue is the last account. Uh, how would you classify that, Lindsay? Do you remember? Current liability. Yes, yes. Perfect. Yes, unearned service revenue means the customer paid you up front and you owe them a service, unearned, right? Got to earn it. Uh, and so that would make it a current liability. Of course, all I got to do is click on the next slide uh, and you don't have to look at my chicken scratch. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, it's also in your book. This is also right out of your book. Um, took it right out. So uh, this is very, very good to know. It's very, very good to study because part of our, our work today was understanding the classifications and how the accounts fit into those classifications. And so this becomes uh, your work for, for the week. Woo! Celebration. 